Chelsea last night, boys. What do you make of Chelsea? I, I, don't, I don't know what to say about it much anymore. A good win. Late goals, though. Two big away wins in the space of a week. Fans last night, though, were calling from out even harder than they were after the Wolves defeat. What, what are we saying? Because, and then you get some that are like, no, he's, he's pro proven he can turn, you know, as, 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 are they turning a corner? Is it the manager getting everyone on side? What, what are you saying, LB? Because they're just, I mean no. this with respect. They're a weird team right now and a weird yeah, we, club right now. We, we need to chill out a little bit, yeah, on, on Chelsea, right? Because... It wasn't too long ago. I think they won four out of five Premier League games or something like that. And everyone was like, oh, a Chelsea, a Chelsea back. You know what I mean? And then actually, you have a look at the fixtures, right? And then the run that they had, um, here you go. The run that they went on, they beat, they beat Palace, Luton, Preston. Um, then they went to Fulham, got a 1-0 win, beat Middlesbrough. You know what I mean? Everyone was like, oh, they back, they back. You know, they come against Aston Villa, draw. Um, come up against Liverpool, lose. Come up against Wolves, lose. So, I, I, I think that what it's starting to show me is that maybe against the weaker sides, they're starting to get consistent and show the dominance and they can actually beat the weaker sides at the, at the bottom of the table. Mm. But when they come up against a difficult opponent, they're, 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 they are you know still, still struggling a little bit. Um, you know, people say, oh, but they beat Aston Villa. I thought Aston Villa was shocking that day, to be honest, and so do Aston Villa fans. Um, the real test is now. You know, they've got City at the weekend, uh, Liverpool coming up there as well. So these are the games that, and then they've got Liverpool in the Cup. You know, these are the games, really, that we should be judging Chelsea off. You know, they spent a billion quid, yeah? they got this manager in that I still think is a bit of a fraud. You know, again, are we really going to sit here and praise them for beating Crystal Palace? You know, Crystal Palace, by the way, you know what I mean? I, I, most of their fans want Royston gone. So I'm not really going to sit here and, and praise Chelsea Football Club for beating beating Crystal Palace. And, and, and if any if any Chelsea fan thinks that's harsh, then, then I'm sorry, but you, you've, you, you know, you've dropped, you've dropped your standards because you should be beating Crystal Palace. You've got a billion quid, you should be beating Crystal Palace. I'll judge you when you play City and you play Liverpool. And you play Spurs, yeah. I, th I think that's I actually think that's uh, Chelsea's next next three matches. Oh, the Chelsea game's been postponed because obviously it's the Carabao Cup. Yeah, I'll judge you off these next two games. And then you got Chelsea, you got uh, Newcastle coming up at the start. And then these are the games that I want to see. Chelsea, well, I don't want to see it, but these are the games that we should be judging Chelsea off. Mm. You know, if if Chelsea get a get a result at the weekend, um, buzzing for them. If they if they manage to somehow win against Liverpool in the cup final, then I might sit here and go, you know what. Maybe he, does, maybe he did just need some time and he's really starting to influence. But if he gets beat off City, he gets beat off Liverpool, we're back to square one again. So I just think we just need to chill out a little bit on, on, on Chelsea. You know, I, I, here's a bit of credit I'll give them, yeah? They do look like they've got a little bit more plan about them. Yeah, like when I watched them, I watched them last night, you know, they, they looked like they, they, they knew what they were going to do. I thought Gary Neville was waffling quite a lot during the commentary, to be honest with you, about... They don't look like they're going to score. Oh, well, I thought they were getting the ball into some good areas. It was just about that moment. Conor mm. Gallagher, great finish from him. But yeah, listen, I, I'm sorry if that's controversial, but I don't think we should be judging Chelsea when they play Crystal Palace. With all due respect to Crystal Palace, we should be judging Chelsea when they play City, when they play Liverpool, when they play Newcastle, Arsenal, United, Tottenham, because they're the better teams and that's what they should be competing with. That's a fair comment to make. Yeah, I'm with you, LB. Now, everything you've just said, I honestly don't need to repeat because I agree with every word of it. And yeah, the last couple of games, Caicedo, Enzo and Gallagher have started to prove them that they can actually work together as a midfield. I think Cole Palmer's been their best player by far. I honestly look at him and think that that was a fantastic bit of business. Really good signing. And he's again got on the... Um, on the uh, GA again last night. I think he assisted both goals, if I'm not if, I, if I'm correct. Yeah, Cole Palmer. Um, good. Yeah, really, really good signing. But... Um, I think Chelsea's standards is just in the gutter. I mean, they're like all over the place, arguing with each other. You've got some fan base that are from the Roman era going, what have, what have they done to our club? We we always at the top. We should be. We're Chelsea. And the last two decades, we've always been at the top. And you've got some fans that are like, well, we're in 11th and it's the manager's fault because the players are brilliant. Like Everyone wants our players. Look at them. No, <laughs> harsh reality check. Sorry, spoiler alert. Nobody really wants your players. Yeah, nobody is really jealous about you spending 200 or 300 million on a midfield that is probably worth about 150 million. No one is jealous of that. You know what I mean? It's weird. I don't get it. Um, when Gallagher's one of your better players, apparently, this season, that's a problem. 
That is an issue because uh, he's been one of their better players for Palace and West Brom when he's been on loan. Um, he shouldn't be one of the best players at Chelsea. So for me, there is issues at Chelsea for sure. And I think if they had anything about them as a fan base that you could unite, then Poch would have gone by now, you know, because when the fans talk, the fans really do talk and then they have to pull the plug, which is basically what happened with Arsenal with Emery, with Emery you know, um, because as much as he's a great manager, it wasn't working for him and everything at the top was just an absolute mess. Now, I look at the same situation with Pochettino and think that there needs to be something changing. And I don't think it is all Pochettino. I think the whole club is an absolute mess. I think Top Bowley is completely and utterly reckless. How to waste a billion pounds. I think LB and I have spoken about this before. Um, or a billion euros. Because when you say a billion pounds, everyone goes, it's not. It's 990. Um, which is quite always quite funny for me. But there we go. Listen, we are in a situation right now where we are looking at Chelsea trying to fight for a top half not top four, top half mm. position in the league. That is a disgrace for Chelsea Football Club with the money they've spent and the players that they've got. That shouldn't be happening. Some of that is on Poch, 100%. But I honestly don't think, Terry, if you was to actually sack him and get a new manager in, that anything changes, really. I can't really can't really sit there and say that it would because mm. I just don't think the team looks good enough. And when I'm with LB, you beat Villa. Villa look beatable at the moment. You beat Palace. <laughs> Palace are a shambles. People are talking them potentially going down. So I don't then go, oh, well, Chelsea are back. I reckon they're, they're going to win that Carabao Cup now and they'll get in the top four. No, I still think Chelsea will struggle this season. So nothing's really changed from where I was at the start of the season to now, Tell, if I'm honest. I disagree with you on that, Dan, though. What do you mean? You don't think, you don't think, you, you don't think if they had a better manager, they wouldn't be higher than they are? No, I didn't say that. I said I don't think they'd get, they'd get much better than where, 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 around where they are now. They'll probably fight for maybe European football, maybe. So but I don't would, think would you, would... Do, you, do you not think that's sackable then? What Pochettino? Yeah, would you not sack him then? Yeah, I would. I would have sacked him b before now. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Because yeah. I'm hearing this quite a lot about like um, people saying, "Oh, well, I won't sack him because I don't see what would change." Well, what would change is you could potentially get European football. So why would you not sack him? Yeah, no, I what? agree with that. But I'm, I'm, I, I, feel like... I, don't, I think some people look at the situation and think it's Pochettino. If it weren't for him, we could get in the Champions League by now with that with his squad. I don't think that squad's good enough. I'm sorry. I do not look at that squad. How many of those players would you want? You know, you said that there's Man United and we all bantered it. I don't think we're far off with Chelsea, if I'm honest. I don't look at Man United squad and Chelsea squad and go, wow. I mean, Man United must be absolutely looking at Chelsea squad right now going, I wish that was our squad. Would you, Terry? I would not. If I was Man United, there is not much difference there. You might look at Enzo, you might look at Caicedo, you might look at Cole Palmer. After that, you're looking right. Petrovic, would you, he looks all right, I suppose, but I don't look at him and go, wow, Alisson better watch out. I, I, no, I, th I, think, I think Chelsea have... I think Chelsea have some good players. You know, you got Malo Kisto in. Malo but Kisto. How many have they got? Like, did you look at that Chelsea squad, LB, and go, that is... I mean, look, look, I, I, personally, I don't look at that squad and go, I'm, OK, there's about 10... Nine or ten players there that I'd happily take into my Arsenal squad. I don't really do that. I like I like Reese James when he's fit, but I wouldn't take him because he's just made a glass. I like I like Ben Chilwell, but he's made a glass. I, I, I don't I, you know Thiago Silva is apparently their best centre half. He's nearly forty. Like where are we going here? Like honestly, Caicedo, I like him a lot, but he hasn't really cut the mustard at Chelsea in my opinion. Enzo. Uh, yeah, he looks all right. I don't really get what he is. I don't know if he's a attacking mid, a number eight. I thought he was very mid. good last night, Enzo. I thought he was yeah, very I think he's good. Been, he's one of the best players in the last two games. But where's that been? Like, where has that been uh, consistently? And then you look at you look up top. Do you want Nicholas Jackson? Not for me. Do you want Broya? Not for me. He's now gone to Fulham. Who else have they got up there? I don't even know who they got now. They got one striker, and then Jackson, and he's now out in apparently in. in suspended. Sterling, you will know about him. I, I wouldn't really say he's awful, but I think he's kind of, you know, all right player. So Cole Palmer and Caicedo are absolute definites. Other than that, LB, how many are you taking at City squad? I'm taking more from them than I would United. Okay, that's fair. But in, but my point is not... My, my point is, like, how many more? Like <laughs> Really? Like, quite, how many are you taking? More. Who are you taking in the squad then? Go on, name them. I'd, I'd take Malo Gusto. Um, Enzo, I would actually take Enzo. I would take um, what Cole Palmer. I'm a massive fan of Cole Palmer. <laughs> You've just sold him to him. <laughs> I, I didn't fucking sell him, did I? I didn't want us to sell him. I, I wanted him to stay. <laughs> I don't fucking want us to, to sell him. Um, Enkunku's a top player. Sterling's better than probably most United wingers on his day. No, no, I'm talking about City. Who are you taking in the City squad? You don't want Sterling. You just said Sterling and Palmer. You sold them to them. Hey, I don't, look, what I'm saying is they've got, for me, they've got better players. I think they've got better players. 
Do, do you know what? It, do you know what? I, I get where you're coming. I look at it this way: when Chelsea was signing these players, I don't know about you, Dan, but a lot of people were looking at it going, "Oh God, that's a good player. It's a good player." It's how they've assembled them and who they have managing them. But I think the problem, and and, and the, what I mean by assembled is they need some experience in there. It's a bit like the Man United situation. They're in this predicament because of how they've been run. Now, I'm not a big fan of Poch. Never have been, never will be. I do think he is part of the problem. The way they played in the first half yesterday, the slow, monotonous play. And I know that they, they, played, they played faster against Villa, and Villa don't play over low block. And Palace did. But it was just like watching paint dry. I just don't see that's the, the players are being instructed to do it. Like, it, as in, I don't think the players are doing it off their own back. They're being told to do it. Start of the second half, they're obviously being told, right, pick up the pace. They picked up the pace and scored within a few minutes. Then they started creating better opportunities, better openings, better chances. It just took them until late to win the game. But it doesn't mean you, you didn't sort of deserve it in terms of the second half. I, I do think, again, if you got the club to be run better, brought in some elder statesmen to help that team, and then brought in a better manager, I think we'd be talking very differently about a lot of these players. I think there's a lot of talent in this Chelsea team, but it's a lot of talent that could go to waste if the club isn't run right. Like, like, I, I, like, a theory I have is this. If you take KDB from five years ago and put him in the Man United squad and you put Bruno Fernandes in the City squad, the world views those two players differently today. I, 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 and same with Chelsea, if, if vice versa. In the sense of when clubs are run poorly, when they keep changing managers, when there's no real plan as a club, you can erode the best talent and quickly. Whereas if your club is run well and you've got a brilliant manager and the ethos is great, you can take a player that's very good and they'll always look that little bit better. You know, how many players left Barca? Not the superstars of the Barca team, but didn't look as good elsewhere. How many top, I mean, like, a lot of players have left City, have gone elsewhere. They don't look as good as when they were at City because they're not part of that that same team and that same ethos. So I don't know with Chelsea. I, I look at it as, I honestly, they confuse me. One minute I think I get them and understand them, the next minute I don't. What, one of the other things that I find confusing at the minute is I know Chelsea fans hate this being said, but we'll say it. Conor Gallagher has been one of their best players this year without a shadow of a doubt. I'm not even saying he's that great, but he's been one of the best players. They are going to offer him a new deal, but the word is still that he's going to be sold. So I look at it and think, in terms of, you said about future-proofing. I get, sometimes you buy an older player, look, you're going to play a lot of football for the next year or two until we bleed somebody else through. But why are you playing Conor Gallagher week in, week out if you're going to sell him as a club in the summer? And so if, if you're at the beginning of a project and he's young, you're better off using somebody else who's part of your plans. That's the element of Chelsea that I don't get. There's lots of Could areas FFP, where... I... Could be FFP, Could be FFP, they need to catch. No, I, I get it. But, and so they've got to play him, so they've got to move him on. But then you're not trying to develop a team right now. You're essentially putting some players in there just so you get money for them. Again, if you're a Chelsea fan, that should worry the living daylights out of you. That's the, that's a horrible place to be in. Well, we don't really want to play Gallagher. We want to sell him. But we've got to play him so we can get the money so we can spend. Now, Ben Jacobs has kind of poured cold water over that by saying Chelsea have got about 200 million to spend ever before they sell anybody. He's the only, listen, I know he's well connected at Chelsea, so he could be right. A lot of financial experts and a lot of other journalists think that's, that that is nonsense and, and, and it remains to be seen. But if it isn't, if it's not, nonsense, why, did, why is there such a clamber to sell all these players? I get the bro is not good enough, et cetera. But I don't know. I think they're, I think they're actually better off selling Reese James than they are Conor Gallagher. Not because Conor Gallagher's better than Reese James. Reese James can't stay fit. Someone will buy him. Yeah, I agree. Like, I think Reese James has got like serious problem now in, in, in terms of his the hype that was around him maybe what 18 months ago. You know, it's it's it's, it's slowly dying off. You know, I'm, I'm you know when you're scrolling through like TikTok and that and like people are having these debates about the best right back and uh, the best English right back. Some of these people are not even including Reese James in the conversation. It's it's Trent, um, Trippier, and Walker. Whereas eighteen months ago he was involved in that conversation. People are people are not really speaking about him anymore because he's you know at the end of the day you have to stay fit. Do you know what I mean? And like, when he's fit, we all know he's a good player. But ultimately, it's kind of irrelevant, right? If you're only going to play 15, 20 games a season, it's it's, it's kind of irrelevant. So he really needs to focus on on getting himself fit because if he doesn't, his career will just pass him by. We've seen this happen to loads of players in the past. You know, we're not being dramatic. We've seen loads of players with... I mean, look at Thiago, for example, at Liverpool. How long has he been there? Four or five years, something like that? Played, he's not even played yeah. 100 matches yet. You know, so he needs to sort that fitness out. 
Yes, he's he, he's he got the attributes as well to be an unbelievable right back. Oh, as of course, well. he has. Of course he, he has. has yeah. Honestly, he's got the crossing yeah. ability. He's got the up and down. He's got the defensive mind. I think he's a really good footballer. But my God, he's made a glass, and and it is a big shame. And just lastly on Chelsea, by the way, I don't really know anyone that has achieved their goals without a centre forward or a goalkeeper. They're two of the most important positions on the pitch. Mm-hmm. And I know Petrovic has started to come into his own, but he's better than that Sanchez. But have we seen enough for him to go? Yeah, that's the goalkeeper to lead them forward. Petr Cech. You, you, you know, you're, you're, you're the next guy, you know, you're the next pet check. Not for me. And then up top, they've got nothing. They've got absolutely nothing up top. So, I, I, I don't know. I mean, LB thinks Chelsea have got a good squad. Fair play. And he takes some of their players. Oh, whoa, 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 I mean, the start. squad, well, that's what I'm just saying. Akanji, Rico Lewis and Kyle Walker are your right-backs, are they not? I'd say Rico Lewis them? is more of a midfielder now, to be honest with you. And, and Akanji yeah, is kind of like, again, he's, you know, <laughs> would, people do this all the time. He's a, he's, he's a centre-back who sometimes we play right-back. So hey, let's, let's not twist my words. The point that I'm making is they've got a squad that's better than being in 10th. Yeah, that's the whole point of the conversation. There we go. It's definitely better than being in tenth. And a few few Chelsea fans saying, "How could we sell Reese?" It's not about his ability; it's about his availability. And I think when he's fully fit and fully functioning, he's better than Gusto. But Gusto is going to play for you. It looks like he's going to play for you regularly, week in, week out. So he's therefore by default better because he's available. At the end of the day, if you're not fit and you can't play, it is what it is. Uh, Petrovic was a great signing, is what uh, Miko Dillon says here. Yeah, I mean, I've been watching him a couple of times. Yeah, look, he, uh, looks yeah he looks good. He looks good. I don't know if he's going to take him to the top, but he looks good, man. He looks like an all right goalkeeper, yeah. Yeah. Better than Sanchez, anyway. Yeah, that's not hard, though, is it? Jeez. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Uh, 